Uh, for a little over four years, Apple's iTunes store has dominated digital music sales. But with tensions rising within the industry itself, are cracks finally appearing in the iTunes dominance? Earlier this week, Universal and Google announced what may finally lead to an iTunes music store killer. In association with the startup G-Box, Universal Music Group will begin to test sales of music without digital rights management. Instead of using software, Universal will buy Google ads for search queries pertaining to artists and songs. The results will take you to G-Box's widget, where you can buy your music directly from Universal. The music publisher has been looking for a way to undermine Apple's power over the music business for quite a while, but critics are skeptical if Apple's dominance can be shaken. Can Universal make a dent in Apple's armor? Or is the iTunes empire stronger than ever? File's done. It's the loop. All right, my guest tonight from San Francisco, senior editor for Wired News, Dylan Tweeney, joins us. And from New York, staff writer for CNETsNews.com, Caroline McCarthy. Welcome to The Loop, everybody. Dylan, I'd like to start with you. What does Universal going DRM-free on G-Box, like, what does something like that actually mean for iTunes or Apple? You know what? I think for Apple, it doesn't mean a whole lot. I actually love this story. I think it's hilarious to watch uh, a music label in the position of, not having access to their customers and having to uh, depend on somebody else. And that's Apple. And they don't like it. You know, they're not used to being in that position. And uh, you can see them struggling. But to be honest, man, you know, iTunes has a huge amount of market share. And it's going to be really tough for them to go around that. And you also got to keep in mind the fact that nobody knows anything about this G-Box yet. Except for a couple of tidbits like the fact that it's only going to work on Windows computers running Microsoft Internet Explorer, that's not a good sign. Yeah, that, yeah that, I, I'm, I'm certain that accounts for the bulk of people who are on the cutting edge and getting their music digitally, right? That's right. They're certainly not well, running Firefox or, or, or running Macs, no. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely no Apple users or music fans. They just, they just don't intersect, do they? Well, Caroline, <laughs> you know, let's, let's talk about this service for a second. I mean, uh, to, to, to talk about G-Box is one thing, but the fact that Universal, one of the biggest pub music publishers out there, that they might actually pull their library from iTunes, I mean, should Apple be threatened by that at all? I mean, yes, it could be terrible for consumers, but... Couldn't that be terrible for iTunes? Well, the thing is, is that Universal has said that it's not renewing its long-term contract with, with Apple for iTunes. That doesn't necessarily mean that its music is going to be pulled from iTunes. It just means a less stringent contract. It means that there will be fewer required exclusives on iTunes. It doesn't necessarily mean the whole catalog will be pulled. If the whole catalog is pulled, then yeah, that is a bad sign for Apple. But I don't think Apple is going to want that to happen. Right. So. Yeah, they're hedging their bets, too, Universal. I mean, they'd be foolish to pull their catalog entirely. I, you know, I, it just controls so much of the online distribution. I just can't see them going around it at well, this point. And, so then, and people do like the iTunes software. It's, it's right, centralized. It's easy. It helps you find new music. It's, it's good. The DRM is, is the one thing that people can really deck it for. Sure. Do you well, really think that people care about DRM in iTunes, though? I mean, it's so minimally invasive in iTunes. I think most people are like, hey, 99 cents, I'll buy it. I can do pretty much everything I want with that. Well, I think what it really, what it, the people who it really affects are the manufacturers of other music players. I think that they're, they're the ones right. who are frustrated because they can't put the iTunes songs on their players. And they generally are not formally connected to the music labels, so it is a little bit odd that the, that the, that the big uh, alleged mover and shaker here is going to be a music label. Right. Well, okay, yeah, we, we, all talk, we can all talk about, uh, we, I want to get to, to something that Caroline said, Dylan, real quick, and that was, you know, we love iTunes. It's great. It works. It's fantastic. But Dylan, yeah. how could Google factor into this, though? Because they say they're just selling some ads, but they could single-handedly direct millions of customers to this new service that is apparently G-Box. Right, they could. I, you know, if there was any evidence that people were buying music through Google or searching online through Google, I think that that would make a big difference in the short term. Eventually, they might do that, but right now, I think most people, if they're looking for music, they're going to go, um, you know, they're going to want to fill up their iPod. They're going to go through iTunes. And, um, you know, when you search on Google, you're probably looking for illegal uh, BitTorrent trackers anyway. So. Well, maybe, but yeah, Caroline, what about, the, what about the housewife who's just searching for Rihanna because she wants to download her umbrella? You know, if she punches that into Google and all of a sudden she can click to buy, couldn't that, uh, couldn't that potentially lead to a major shift? Well, it takes several to steps to get from Google to iTunes, though, right? To get yeah, it onto, it's, you know. It's a Google ad, too. Google's an advertising partner here. Um, right. You know, it, it depends on whether or not you're going to click on these Google text ads in the first place. I think people would love to see a big Google Apple showdown. They want to make this into a big, you know, battle <laughs> of the tech companies, Paris versus yeah. Nicole kind of thing. But, you know, that's... 
That's what I want to see. Take off the kid gloves. Let's see some blood on that black turtleneck. Yeah, yeah. And they want to see Universal as sort of the frenemy in the middle that's that's making all this all this friction happen. But I don't think that's the situation right now. It's what people would like to see because that'd be that'd be really messy and really exciting. You know, pass the popcorn. Well, and then let's let's go to that. Then let's get to the final word. We'll start with you, Dylan. Is iTunes going to survive the the coming onslaught of competition, or is there a potential they could actually be taken down in the next five years or so? You know, I don't know about five years. That's a long time. I think in the short term, iTunes' uh, position is really solid. Um, that said, there's some ways in which, you know, the iTunes experience could be simplified and made easier and streamlined. And I think if I were a competitor, that's what I would go after rather than, um, you know, touting DRM, which, you know, I, gonna, I personally don't like DRM, but I don't think most consumers care about that. It's going to take both an upstart and a big deck to iTunes. And that could happen if a, if a major label like Universal decides to pull all of its songs from iTunes, then yeah, that would be a problem. But at the same time, you would also have to have a good upstart. You're going to need somebody to take the place, and you're also right. going to need a big blow to iTunes. And right now, I don't think we're seeing both of those. I just yeah. want my m m tracks DRM-free, and I will go wherever I need to to get them. But in the meantime, I want to thank my guests, <laughs> Dylan and Caroline, for keeping us on thank the loop. Thank you. Appreciate your time, All right, everybody. thank you. Attack of the Show, weeknights at 7, only on G4.